Hey sketchy friends, I am back with episode four of Sketch Gaudi with me. <laughs> and if you haven't seen the other three episodes, they they show you the sketches that you can see on the sketchbook uh, right now at the moment. So you can step through those one by one if you haven't seen those yet, uh, go take a look. Otherwise you can carry on with me today and we are sketching the main event, my friends. We are going to tackle the Sagrada Familia, um, which is arguably Gaudi's most famous work um, and still incomplete as well. So I was just reading that they were hoping that it would be completed by 2026, which would be the centenary of Gaudi's death. Gaudi is actually buried in the cathedral, but I think due to COVID and stuff, there have been delays etc etc so I don't think that's going to happen which is unfortunate that would have been really really cool but I was also reading that some of it won't even be finished till 2040 so jeesh what a what an absolutely spectacular architectural project really is just quite something so anyway what I'm going to do here is I'm working from this photograph which I've got up in the corner uh, if you want the photo reference to work from, then just head over to my website. The link is in the description below. At the moment, I'm just mapping out the very basic shape of where I want the uh, church to go or the cathedral to go. I want to leave these spaces on either side of the sketchbook spread, and I might even have space there for a title or, or some lettering, but we'll see how it goes. And I've just kind of penciled in the main area where the four towers um, are going to go and then just kind of like some loose ideas of where the side bits are going to go. As you can see, like literally no detail at all, just a rough shape to work from just so that I know the size is going to be okay. Um, and I have a rough idea on placement of where these things are going to be. So I thought, well, let me just put in the towers as well, because I think it's kind of important that like those two central ones are taller and the ones either at either side are shorter, just stuff like that. Just make sure this main triangle in the middle is kind of there. This is an exceptionally complicated building and this is where our powers to simplify are really going to come in handy. So, you know, this is a great thing to practice uh, keeping things simple with. So, you know, you've got to look at the picture and you're like, okay, what are the key defining aspects of this building that if you just drew that, people would still know what this building is? And that's that's the question to ask yourself. So to my eyes, um, it's these four kind of uh, towers in the middle or spires or whatever you want to call them. They are pretty recognizable and mainly kind of that, that front triangle. Yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. All the rest can kind of be indicated and it's just not really that important, especially on a sketchbook spread that is all about Gaudi. I mean, there's just absolutely no way that people aren't going to know what this is. You know, when we're sketching, we're just trying to capture the essence of the thing. We're just trying to capture a likeness, an impression. It's our impression of that thing. And, you know, that's where you start to see so many people's interpretations of scenes and that's what makes art and sketching and drawing and painting so interesting because everyone sees the world through their own eyes. So we, we have to remember, you know, I'm not going to sit here and do like a three hour, very detailed architectural drawing of this building. This is me sitting, imagine me sitting or yourself sitting in front of this building in Barcelona. It's probably hot. It's probably really busy. Lots of tourists. And you just kind of want to like nail this, you know, you want to get it down on your sketchbook quickly and but like so that it's recognizable and you probably just want to go for like a glass of wine or something. <laughs> so so yeah, so if I was walking around collecting sketches of Gaudi buildings, I'd be very tired if I was spending like three hours on each one. And that's kind of not what I would be looking to do if I'm travel sketching. I like to sketch when I'm traveling. I really like to sketch a lot, but I don't want to spend my whole day sketching. I still want to experience things. I still want to see things. If I'm with friends or family, I still want to hang out with them. So, you know, it's that fine balance like out in the real world, so, like how much time do you actually have? So I was quite happy with how long this took me. I think it was about like 40 minutes. 
so I think that's pretty reasonable. I've decided that I'm going to use my Fuday nib fountain pen for this sketch. Um, I'll put a link in the description below to which one it is. It's just one off Amazon, just like a random one. If I'm honest, I just saw one. I was like, okay, let me try that one. I have used the Sailor um, fountain pen, the green one, which is very, very popular with a lot of people. I didn't really get on with it very well. This one is better for my hand, but maybe the line variation on it is not quite so distinctive as perhaps with the green Sailor pen. Um, but yeah, I, you know, if you're interested in a few day pens, I just say like, just, you know, just buy one um, and just see how you get on with it because everyone likes different, different tools, you know. Um, but I do find, and I don't know what it is, and I think a lot of sketches would agree, I find I can just be a lot looser with this style of pen rather than like a fine liner or something. Nothing wrong with fine liners, and in fact, I've used those for the other sketches on this page. But I found like the other sketches on this page and the other buildings were a lot more simple to draw and to decipher. I feel like with something like this, and I do feel like this with, you know, more gothic or complicated or very ornate architecture, it's just easier to draw it if you draw loosely. So that's why I've sort of, if you like, changed my drawing style to um, fit with the style of architecture that I am drawing. And I tend to do that. I don't do it very consciously, but I have noticed that that is what I do. If something looks simple to draw, the simple shapes, nice clean shapes that that building in the bottom left hand corner, then that, that's the kind of style I go for. But if I'm looking at something like this Sagrada Familia, it's just like, nah, no way, I can't, you know, I can't even see what's going on in the photograph, let alone, you know, draw it. Uh, super cleanly. So then I kind of lean towards this style, which I also think is really fun and really cool. So there's just no right or wrong way. So I am going to speed this up a bit just so you don't have to watch me draw this in real time. So I've sped this up by four. Um, and what I would look for is just the key defining shapes like on the front of the building. It's, it's tricky to see because I'm drawing across the crease or the fold of the sketchbook page, but just on the front you can see those defined shapes of darkness and they can really help define what it is you're looking at. So it's looking for those key characteristics that tell us what this building is. Um, as long as you can hit like two or three of the main distinguishing characteristics of the building, the rest of it really doesn't matter too much. Um, so things like looking for patterns. So on the, those four spires, you can see how I've used the pen to produce a thicker line and I've kind of put those squares of dark ink down and then just below that I've put the longer um, strokes of black to show those kind of openings there. So things like that look for those kinds of shapes and that's what I love about using this kind of pen is that you can do your thin lines and uh, colour in or do thicker lines all with one pen and all at the same time so rather than going back and adding thicker lines perhaps at the end um, like I have done in in the previous sketches, I can kind of get it all done all at once uh, right now. And just for those interested, this pen has got platinum carbon ink inside of it uh, with a with a converter that actually I think came with the pen. I don't think I bought it separately. I think it came with the pen. So yeah, I just use platinum carbon ink in all of my fountain pens. I haven't really tried anything else to be honest with you, but it's just easy to get and it works. So I've got really no desire to uh, to go searching for any other ink to be honest at this at this particular juncture it is black it is waterproof it's permanent so it does the job for for me so you know I'm conscious I'm not really getting these kind of triangular shapes potentially in the right place but again it's a loose sketch and I'm not too fussed I'm just kind of thinking it's actually just a really fun sketch and um, I'm being really loose with the details, not too particular. Again, as long as you're getting like the shapes and like patterns and stuff, then, then it's gonna be all good. And I just, I think it's looking really fun. It's one of those that you, if you step back from it, it looks much more impressive than if you look at it closely and you're like, oh, there's just squiggles, basically. There's just squiggles. So that main triangle, triangular section on the front of the building, I felt like I needed to put some texture in there. It's literally just scribbles. So, um, you know, I really want you to, with this one, you can do, if you don't want to do it on your spread, 
Um, I actually did like just a quick little test sketch on another bit of paper just to make sure what I had in mind was going to work. Didn't do the whole sketch, but just did a few elements of it. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. I think that's going to work. Um, so by all means do that. Um, but then just go for it and get straight in there. Put your basic shapes in pencil just so you know what size you want to sketch the building and then just go for it with your pen. So I have recently bought new watercolour paints. I've gone with a brand called Rosa. I was using White Knights paints. Uh, I have been using them for for years. That's in this little box here. But I bought myself this new palette and I bought myself some tubes of watercolour paint, which is also um, something sort of reasonably new to me. I've got the odd tube, uh, which I have poured out into the kind of empty pans before, but I've never actually used watercolour in this kind of way that I've got it now. So everything's new to me at the moment, so it might take me a while to kind of get used to my new colours and my new style of paint and my new palette. Um, but it's exciting because I haven't changed things up really for about four years now, so I thought it was about time. Um, so more on that probably in a video um, somewhere along the line. But yeah, I'm using a nice big brush because when you do a loose sketch, um, you know, you want to keep the, the watercolour loose as well. And I've got a lot of ink lines and a lot of detail here. Um, whether it's loose detail or not, it's still detail. So, you know, I feel like when you've got a lot of drawing, you don't want to go too over the top with the watercolour side of things. So I'm looking at my photograph and I'm just really seeing this beautiful golden colours. So I'm just using yellow ochre, which is what I've got in this particular set of watercolours. Um, but I think, you know, quinacridone gold would be nice or like an Indian gold or something. Just a nice uh, gold colour. And I'm using the paint very wet and I'm also dabbing bits of uh, burnt umber in as well, just to kind of give a bit of colour variation. It just makes it look way more interesting. Um, than if you paint a flat colour. So it, I'm working quite wet here and just uh, yeah dabbing the colours in and letting them just bleed on the page. I am using a Hanna Müller Nostalgie sketchbook here. Um, it's very 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 smooth paper so you know it's not going to be the best for like watercolour purists but for those of us who like ink and watercolour or line and wash kind of sketching then it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. It's very nice to draw on for sure. And now I'm just mixing up like a dirtyish pinky red colour for the roof behind here. And you know, again, I'm, I'm working where I actually really don't mind if my colours blend a little bit on the page from if I touch a wet area. It just adds to the looseness and I just think it makes it look really, really cool and dynamic. And I can see like a bit of a green area here, so I'm just dabbing in something there on top of the the main facade of the building. And then I've got this whole area of like trees and stuff. So I'm actually going to lay down and I'm experimenting here because these are new colours to me. So I'm just sort of seeing what works, but I'm putting down the yellow ochre again on the trees just because I can see some nice kind of yellowy shades shining through the trees. And then I'm just going in with the green um, on top. And very similarly to the White Knights colours, this particular green I'm using is just called green. So again, just putting down some yellow ochre just towards the top of the trees where the sunlight is hitting. And then whilst it's still wet, just putting down some green on the page too. But it, again, not mixing it on the page. You can see I'm just dabbing it and I'm changing the direction of my brush as I'm doing it as well, uh, which will help get some texture. I'm picking up even more pigment towards the bottom of the trees um, to show like that's where the shade is or the shadow. Um, it's a very quick, painterly, easy way to portray foliage. Um, if you do this, like, you know, working from your yellowy tones towards the bottom, uh, sorry, towards the top where the sun's hitting and getting progressively darker as you work down the foliage and yeah, just being very loose with your brush marks as well. You do not have to draw in every single tree and leaves and things like that. I find this is a really quick way just to show that there's foliage um, and it takes me like two minutes. So I like it's kind of blending into the other sketches. It seems to be working out. I like the, um, the mosaic wall in the front, which was from episode one, it kind of actually stands forward a bit now because it's got that the foliage in the background. 
I'm starting to go in a bit stronger with some of that yellow ochre because I really want this part of the building to be like the hero of the sketch. So I want it to be really nice and bold color wise. And now I'm thinking about shadows. So I've got a bit of indigo on the palette there. I really like indigo. It's a really nice color. And I'm just going to add in a bit of my Quin, Quinadricone. I think it's Quinadricone Magenta. Some kind of pinky color anyway, reddish pinky color. And um, yeah, I think that will make a really nice contrast to the golden yellow because it's like a nice dirty purple, like a muted purple. And it's going to make a really nice kind of shadow color. Now I, have, I don't want to go too quickly in with the shadows on the building because I have only just put that yellow ochre down, but I'm notoriously um, impatient when, <laughs> when it comes to these things. So inevitably I always paint too soon and it's not dry yet and it makes a little bit of a mess, but I also think it looks really interesting. So um, try and be patient and wait until your first layer is dry before you put your shadows on, unless you're going for a bit of a messier look, which is absolutely fine too. And I'm going to try and be reasonably consistent with my shadows as well and just sort of use the same kind of mixture across the across the picture. Um, perhaps some a bit fainter, a bit waterier than other parts. And if you don't feel like a shadow area is dark enough, don't be afraid to go in and make it darker because adding that the dark darks and keeping the, the light lights is really going to add, that's what's going to give you the contrast in your sketch. So I could use a smaller brush for this, but um, again, I'm feeling a bit lazy, so I'm just going in with the with the bigger brush. But again, it just does add to that loose feeling. And it's, it's you know, I think if you want to go wild and you really want to go for that loose look, then just paint the whole thing with a really big brush. When I say with a really big brush, this is a size number 10 round brush. If anyone's interested, this is an Escoda Reserva, which I've think I've had for since 2017. I think that's when I bought it. Maybe even 2016. Yeah, so that's a good eight years. Um, so these are expensive brushes, but uh, you know, I, I use it basically on every single sketch and have done for eight years. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a worthwhile investment for sure. So the best thing to do is just squint your eye at the photograph and just see where those dark shadow areas are and then just put just put the paint down and just go for it. And I'm, I'm looking at this now and I really like the way the building's kind of bending a little bit. I think it gives it, it's almost like a caricature. I think it gives it lots of energy and lots of fun. And I think it's in keeping with the kind of style of illustration that's on this page. Um, so I'm, I'm totally okay with the fact that it's, it seems to me when I'm looking at it now that it's like kind of a bit bent. <laughs> um, wonky things are, are always fun, so that's totally fine. And I'm just putting down some water. Um, really, I probably should have changed my water, but it's not too dirty on the page. So that's okay. And then I'm just adding some cerulean blue, which is a really nice color for, for skies. I'm not painting very smoothly. I'm kind of almost giving a bit of texture just to just to, again, give a bit of interest to the sky and, you know, there might be clouds and stuff like that. I never feel the need to paint a sky really smoothly. I quite like uh, texture. And I'm going to kind of paint the sky in a bit of a shape just so that it doesn't take up the whole spread or anything like that. Um, I was hoping I might have a bit of space at the top just for like a bit of a title or some lettering or something like that, but maybe that's not going to go there anymore. Um, this is what I mean. It's not a planned sketchbook spread. I'm just sort of building it sketch by sketch and we'll just see how it goes and how it turns out. But I'll tell you, so far I'm actually really happy with how it's looking. I know I always wanted the Sagrada Familia uh, slap bang in the middle here. Um, just felt like that's what should happen. But you can see I've got space now on the right, top right and the top left for two more sketches. So um, we'll see how that goes and we'll see what um, I decide to choose for those kind of areas, but so far I'm really happy with how it's looking. So the thing that I feel like is missing is on the top of these spires, I have left them white, even though in the photograph they may look a bit beige or whatever, but I just really wanted them to stand out. Um, but I do feel like they're just mi missing a little bit of texture. So I'm just putting some very loose little marks on there just to give them a bit of texture, just with a 0.1 fine liner, just because that's what was to hand. 
And then I thought maybe that I'll just add a bit more um, dark green, so a bit more pigment of that green colour down at the base of the trees. Just felt like I wanted a little more contrast. Felt like the dark areas just weren't quite dark enough for my liking. And you can see what a difference it makes. It just really starts to pop when you add those dark darks. And again, being super loose with my brush marks, just sort of almost dabbing paint down on the page. And really, when I'm looking at this, you could actually leave those two blank spaces on the top left and right, and just leave a bit of white space on the page. You could fill that up with um, some lettering and some journal notes. I'm just thinking if you're travel sketching, fill up with some, some thoughts about the day that you've had, uh, collecting Gaudi sketches, stuff like that. But I am going to go ahead and do another couple of episodes on this and fill those areas with sketches. But I'm just saying, actually, if I look at this sketchbook spread, I could stop here and I would be very happy with it. But yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll see what happens. And I hope you guys will join me for the next episode. Any questions, just let me know. You can comment below. Probably better to email me because I just see those a bit more often. You can follow me on Instagram as well, Tario Sketchy Adventures. And if you want to join me in Spain, I've still got a couple of spaces left. So you can check out the itinerary below. Um, and I will see you guys in the next episode.